everyone, I have some thoughts that I need to get out about the Route 91 Country Music Festival that was happening at the Mandalay Bay where the tragic event happened. I was sleeping, I got a text message from my godmother and just giving you a preface. I love my godmother, we just don't talk all the time. It was 10.52, she's like, hi, um, it's your godmother, are you okay? And I'm dead asleep, I'm reading it, barely trying to see what she's saying. Hey, just waking up for work, I'm okay, is everything okay? Kind of curious why she's texting me so late at night, I have to work at midnight. Oh, thank God, shooting at Jason Aldean concert at Mandalay Bay, let your mom and dad know that you are okay, whichever one you are not with, love you. I'm kind of thinking shootings happen at concerts all the time. This is maybe just another one of those, but I respond back, that's so scary, thanks for checking on me, love you too. So I go back to bed. I wake up, it's around 11, I hop in the shower, I get out, my little brother's dad comes running into my room, he rarely ever comes in my room. He goes, do you know what's going on? Have you seen the news? I'm sitting on my floor trying to get dressed, because I'm going to work and I tell him I know that there was a shooting at the Jason Aldean concert Kamadi just texted me just kind of staring at him like that's all I know and he goes yeah it's a lot bigger than that so I leave I get to work I work at a radio station where we play top 40 music the vibe is usually pumpy the energy is flowing I get there and it's kind of silent. More and more people are coming into the station that usually aren't there during my shift. They're here to help answer phone calls, to help give opinion, to help inform what's going on. We kind of, Our station turned into a mini news station. We were updating the general public that was listening at the time during the time of my shift from 12 to 5 a.m. and beyond that, what was happening down there at that time and whoever was calling in around the general vicinity. At that time, I, I, my mind is numb. I'm kind of in shock thinking, is this really happening in my own backyard? Is this happening in my own city? I'm a Las Vegas citizen. I'm a Las Vegan. Are people, people really attacking us? Are there multiple gunmen? Like, a million thoughts are racing through my head, like, is everyone okay? I'm getting text messages at work, are you okay? I'm starting to text people, are you okay? I have friends that are at the Strip, at the Luxor, at the, you know, all over. I'm just at a loss for words right now. I just feel like I need to get this out, though. And I, I texted my friend Carson because she was here from out of town, and she goes, you know, we were in the Bellagio, um, there was a lot of people running, we were scared, we ran into the elevator, we heard there was a gunman in our hotel. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like, are you safe in your room? How's the rest of our friend group? What's happening? She's okay, luckily. Um, the whole friend group is okay, luckily. I had some other friends on the strip that were okay. So back at work, back with what I was saying, we're in there watching the news. Um, we start, we're starting to take some calls and we had an Uber driver call saying, you know, hey, these roads are blocked. Just wanted to let everyone know, you know, we're so thankful um, that they were calling us, letting us know so we could let the general public know what was happening as we were being updated with it. We uh, just kind of just watching the news as it was going on, watching interviews, watching the same clip over and over, hearing the gunshots, which is just traumatizing. I don't know, at some point, I ended up taking over the phone calls. We had a lady call in, and usually they would state their name and tell me a little bit about about what was going on so I could put them on air. She couldn't even tell me her name. Her voice was shaking. She goes, you know, hi, I'm a bartender. I, like, sorry for my voice. I'm, I'm currently, 
you know, shaken up, but I was working the festival. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. Was I supposed to leave? Can I leave my, like, my booth? I'm trying to take cover. Then I decided to stay back. I'm trying to help people leave, point to like where, where the exit is, where to go. There was one guy that I was helping out and he just had passed away in, in my arms. And hearing her say that, you, your heart just goes out to her because it's so devastating. And you just, you feel so sad for her. We had other callers call in. We're hearing other stories of text messages to some of the disc jockeys that are in with me. One, one guy had to dive underneath a stage that was impeded with bullets and he didn't know where else to go and he just stood there. We, you know, there was another one about a girl who, she was working the event as staff and she hid in a porta potty for around two hours. You know, there, there were many stories that kept calling in and, you know, the stories are replaying in your head over and over and over and you just want everything to be okay. You're kind of just like, it almost feels like a nightmare. You're thinking, is this over yet? Is this really my city? Is this really happening in Las Vegas? Um, you know, some more thoughts that were going through my head is that I attended this music festival three years ago with my cousin and to think that, you know, Thank gosh we're okay, we both weren't there this time, but we could have been. And it's it's super scary. So it's something where, you know, you need to reach out to your family members, your friends, you know, people that you care about, make sure that they're okay. Tell them every day that you love them. Make sure that people that you, if you don't talk to all the time, that you make up with because you never know when your last day is. You don't know that when a tragic event could happen, if it could be in your city, it could be around you. You don't know how severe it could be. Just be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of what is going on. Um, furthering this, just seeing multiple posts online, you know, pray for Las Vegas, stay strong Las Vegas, praying for Vegas. You think, wow, I see those hashtags, me personally speaking, on the East Coast, pray for Harvey victims, pray for Harvey, pray for Irma. I didn't think in my wildest thoughts that I would see praying for Las Vegas, stay strong Las Vegas. This is happening in my own backyard, a few miles down the street from me. I go to the Mandalay Bay, I go to the Shark Reef, I go to the Strip, and to know that the whole Strip was on lockdown pretty much is really scary. There was a guy from the Cosmopolitan that also called into my work and he was a chef and he didn't know what to do. They were on lockdown in their kitchen. They couldn't leave. He didn't know if they were gonna be able to get out. He didn't know if there was a shooter inside the Cosmopolitan. That was another thing. There were multiple accusations about shooters in different hotels like the New York, New York, the Aria, different places. There could have been a bomb threat multiple things were coming up in the news and online and it made it very hard for everyone to know what was real and what wasn't real and to just see those clips that were just being you know shown to the public just kind of has me speechless like it's just very hard to watch over and over and over again it's very hard to hear it's very hard to you know Luckily, I'm okay. I, you know, wasn't at the festival. I had a coworker that was there. Thank gosh that she is okay. She's a little bit shaken up. Vegas is a very small community. So if you weren't affected by it, you know someone who was affected by it. And it's kind of like that six ratio where if you don't know someone, you know someone who knows someone. And I have some friends who know people or who were their friends that had passed away. There was a story about this girl um, she goes to school with, one of my friends, and her boyfriend's little brother had gotten shot. Um, there was another story I saw on Twitter where this boyfriend was protecting his girlfriend and uh, he was like covering over her and he got shot in the back and I think she had broken her leg or something to that extent and she got drug away and he didn't make it and she didn't know if he was alive or if he had passed away. Stories like that just make me so, so upset. And so my heart goes out to all the people that have been affected by this. I hope that your healing process goes 
smoothly to what it can right now. I hope that, you know, loved ones, family members, friends, people, acquaintances, that, you know, if you were affected by this, that there have been a lot of people donating blood to the hospitals. There have been a lot of people trying to volunteer. You know, Lyft and Uber drivers are trying to help give rides. And, you know, the, the, I'm super thankful that not only Las Vegas as a community, but people all over the world have been trying to give back. And, you know, I'm super thankful for that. And you just don't think that this could happen to you or could happen to your city. And just some advice is just to always be aware, to always be con conscientious, you know, and to think that this is an act of terrorism. It doesn't matter about whether your race is, you know, white, black, yellow, pink, green. It, do it doesn't matter about any of that. You know, this was a white guy. This is an act of terrorism. When you are inflicting violence and danger upon civilians and or making them feel inferior, that is terrorism, point blank. You, you can't sugarcoat it. It is what it is. To hear that it's one of the U.S.'s deadliest shooting tragic events and that happened in my own city it's just mind-blowing i haven't posted a lot on social media about it i've kind of just been in shock i'm kind of numb i am sort of upset with my school at the moment they weren't very proactive about sending emails making sure that students were safe making sure that students were aware of what was going on i felt that they had some kind of responsibility to do that and they didn't do it till hours and hours and hours after the tragic event had happened. Um, some teachers are very insensitive. They were still requiring class and I don't feel that, that that was necessary. You know, people are trying to heal right now. People are trying to find their loved ones and friends and people are trying to just rationalize what has actually happened. And to know that that was still being enforced just is very disheartening. I don't know, furthering on, I'm not gonna touch a lot about this, but I did see President Donald Trump's speech. I thought the speech was well written. I think that he sounded a bit more sincere, but actions speak louder than words. And as we all know from previous actions, there hasn't been a lot of those. So I hope with Congress and you know with the nation that we all together as a whole can come together and talk about gun control and talk about those kind of issues and to come with some kind of consensus that this needs to stop. This needs an end. And there's not going to be an end, but this needs to have some kind of positive moving forward with how we can prevent these events from happening the next time. Working in this industry, I've worked a lot of community events. We did the summer heat campaign, handing out water bottles to the public. We've worked events called National Night Out where we promote police um, and community relationships. So knowing that Las Vegas is a very community driven city, we are resilient. We will come back from this. Las Vegas is a safe place. Just know that this could happen anywhere. It could happen in your city. It could happen in the city next to yours. You never know, so don't be afraid. We have to stand together. We, 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 can't, we can't live in fear. We have to keep moving forward. We will be okay. It may not be right now. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be a month from now. Please stay safe. Please acknowledge that this is a really serious event and that it could happen anywhere. Um, please check on your loved ones. Know that, you know, I'm okay. I'm so thankful for the people that have checked on me. Um, and that I'm super, super sad and super sorry for all of the people that, you know, have been affected by this. Please stay safe.